Severe drought conditions have impacted much of the Buckeye State, and a largely dry and warm weather pattern is expected to continue through the middle to latter half of September. So what does this drought mean for you and your community? In this week's edition of the Climate Friday Newsletter, I'm going to break down some of those tangible impacts that drought has had, not only on area farmers, but really on a number of cities across Ohio and southeastern Michigan. We're also going to talk about the long-range weather outlook, and if we have any chance of shaking this weather pattern and receiving a bit more rainfall. If you're not already subscribed, WTOL.com slash email. That is the best place to get the Climate Friday newsletter each and every week straight to your inbox. So let's break down the numbers talking about this severe drought and new data that sheds some light on drought conditions across the Buckeye State and beyond. Each and every week there is a new drought monitor that is released on Thursdays and it provides insight into how the weather is shaping drought conditions across the region. Now up to 95% of Ohio is considered abnormally dry, which means just about every single Ohioan is experiencing some variety of drought. Moderate drought has grown significantly more widespread than it was a week ago and now is up to 78% of the state that is classified as a moderate drought. Just about a week ago, that was Toledo. However, Toledo is now, at least parts of the metro, considered to be under a severe drought, which is the next step up. Nearly half of Ohio is under a severe drought at 42%. Extreme drought is the next level at 24% and the highest magnitude of drought known as an exceptional drought that classifies 8% of Ohio. And I'm going to be talking about some of the tangible impacts of some of those drought levels coming up in just a bit. So who needs rain the most desperately? Severe drought conditions have developed across parts of northwest Ohio, and that does include southeastern portions of the Toledo metro. And there's a secondary area to the west of Toledo in portions of Henry, Fulton, Williams, and Defiance counties. Right along and parallel to the Maumee River between Waterville down towards Bowling Green and over into Woodville and Oak Harbor, portions of of Ottawa County, Southern Lucas County and Northern Wood County. That is where severe drought has developed, and this is a new update over the last week that is reflected by the weather pattern that has really taken shape. Looking further to the west, the city of Archbold is also under severe drought. Looking just to the west of Wauseon and south and east of Montpelier and Bryan and to the north and west of Napoleon, this concentrated area also, which has a lot of farmland there west of Toledo, very much in need of that rain as well. Now, believe it or not, the drought has afflicted southeastern Ohio even worse. Uh, from Columbus down into West Virginia. This is the epicenter of the Ohio drought. We're not just severe, but exceptional extreme drought has essentially made this growing season a wash for some area farmers with an absence of rainfall lasting several months in duration. So what are some of the quantifiable impacts of these droughts that may be affecting you and your community? Let's start things off with a moderate drought. This is probably the most common drought that is occurring right now in Northwest Ohio with financial impacts to landscaping businesses, the grass is not quite as quick to grow and some of those landscaping companies may be a bit hard pressed to find work this time of year. Hay yield can also be low and that can cause financial impacts for area farmers. Also small brush fires become more common when the ground becomes so parched and dry and burning strongly recommended that you do not do this under moderate drought conditions. Also impacts to ecosystems and wildlife. Fewer mosquitoes are observed and reported during moderate drought conditions. Now there are still mosquitoes out there, especially those of you that live or go nearby bodies of water, such as the Maumee River or area ponds. Yes, there are still going to be some mosquitoes around there. And during your typical time of day, right around sunset and twilight, there's going to be more mosquitoes. However, as a whole, there have been fewer mosquitoes late this summer than usual as a result of the drought. Let's take it a step up to the severe drought conditions that have started to unfold across parts of Northwest Ohio. This is where we really start to get into some more significant impacts of the drought. Creeks are dried up. River levels are low. If you've been over to the Maumee River, perhaps at one of our area metro parks lately, you've likely seen those water levels are significantly lower than usual, and that is one of the impacts that is already affecting us here in the 419. Crops can be suffering, especially if that drought happens earlier in the growing season. We'll have to see how the next couple of months unfold as the fall harvest arrives, because this drought really didn't arrive until the second half of summer. You may remember we started off with a good amount of rain this season. Soil can also become dry and cracked. And last but not least, wildfire risk expands profoundly under severe drought. That is one of the reasons California is so predisposed to getting these uh, wildfires, because when the soil is so parched and dry, 
Any flames can quickly and rapidly spread. Last but not least, extreme drought conditions. Think central and northeastern Ohio, where crop yield can be significantly halted and stunted. Uh, between Columbus towards the West Virginia state line, that is where some of the agricultural impacts have been the greatest. Lawns are totally dormant at that point. Folks down in southeastern Ohio really have not needed to mow. In terms of the agricultural impacts, the soybean yield is going to be way lower than usual. This is very significant, especially for the Buckeye State, where we do grow so much of that soybean crop. And the ones that do get produced are not as high of quality. Also, you're going to experience livestock stress, um, whether the livestock eat corn or grass. Either way is not really a great option because that natural feed that occurs with the grass is not going to be as high quality or nutritionally dense and also those livestock feed prices are going to go up so there is a financial ramification as well so how has our rainfall played out over the season it's been very backloaded to say the least we had a very wet june almost half a foot of rainfall july close to three inches of rain now this august number might not necessarily tell the full story there were a few days that were missing from the data at toledo express airport but it was still a very dry august as a whole and september has produced less than a quarter of an inch of rainfall, and that is really where the drought has picked up steam over the last several weeks. Now, what's interesting, when you look at the calendar year as a whole, now this doesn't tell the story of this summer, but Toledo's actually above average in rainfall for 2024, and that's more of a testament to spring than to the summertime months. Across much of the rest of Ohio, though, rainfall is well below average this year. Cleveland and Columbus are both over half a foot below normal in the rainfall department. Cincinnati 4.31 below average and the city of Akron a little closer to normal at 1.13 inches of rainfall below average here across the region. Let's just look at September right now. Toledo is close to one inch below normal in terms of rainfall so far this September. Cincinnati is over an inch below average. Columbus one and a quarter inches below average. Mansfield and Wheeling are also well below average. The drought has really intensified over the last couple of weeks to give you an idea of just how widespread this is. Almost every single county in Ohio is under some sort of drought and over 95% of the Buckeye state is under drought conditions. Looking at moderate drought, which is that next step up close to 78% of Ohio classified as a moderate drought. Here's a breakdown of each one of those levels of drought with extreme being the worst and abnormally dry being a precursor to more significant drought. Exceptional and extreme drought. This is actually a very, very wide widespread drought and it's one of the worst in modern history that we've experienced this century so far and that is mostly represented by southeastern and central Ohio but now Toledo and portions of northwest Ohio considered to be under a severe drought. So will we see any rainfall or change in the weather pattern? Well the long range is still trending very dry and very warm temperatures in the 80s. That deep red color across the lower Great Lakes indicates temperatures that are expected to remain well above average in the mid 80s. In the rainfall department, dry weather also for the lower Great Lakes into the mid-Atlantic. That brown color indicates precipitation that will be below average. It is going to be a bone dry weather pattern through mid to late September. Now, eventually we are going to get some rainfall. Fingers crossed that can happen at least before the fall harvest. We're going to keep you updated here. And if you're not already subscribed to the Climate Friday newsletter, head to WTOL.com email. Follow along on social media for the latest content straight to your inbox every week. Take care.